presentation of this uh, case study, uh, again wind parks, uh, but uh, I think we uh, can show here uh, a clear, uh, yeah, well, to show the principle, uh, a clear example of, of, of the principles uh, we are working with. This goes uh, back to the joint publication uh, between uh, Myself, uh, Michael Faber, and uh, Dimitri Wahl. Uh, it uh, has been published in the uh, 2017 uh, ICOSAR conference. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm following the, the scheme of the of this case study presentation. I will try to make it a little faster. Um, so that we can go then for the lunch break. In relation to the last um, case study presentation, uh, we are considering the operation phase. So the design has already been done. The uh, wind park is ending, and it's basically the commissioning phase. Uh, this is the situation uh, we are finding now as uh, the wind parks have been put in operation. Uh, of course, the uh, uh, more substantial way to consider uh, SHM and inspection and the, basically the integrity management of the structure is to put in the design phase. Uh, like this is uh, the approach of uh, the previous presentation. So, and here uh, we have some, uh, yeah, how does structural health monitoring information contribute to the surface life of uh, extension of wind parks? So, this is also what we find. Uh, the wind park has been designed, it has been uh, put into operation, and now they also think about, or already think about, uh, yeah, but we should extend the surface life because uh, it's very obvious. Uh, there will be a higher return uh, over investment. So it's very uh, beneficial to extend the service life of a wind park, but also in general of the structure. So, uh, and then uh, we, uh, I will go through these uh, decision analysis. And uh, we are after the SHM characteristics, so the monitoring char characteristics which are important uh, to help the service life extension. And this is done uh, by, by the value of information. And it is the perspective uh, that uh, where we usually our decision analysis is very complex. And as I said in uh, one of the last uh, presentations, um, we need to find the right level uh, of, uh, of detail here. Uh, and if we cannot incorporate uh, very, very sophisticated models in this decision analysis, then we need an interface. And here, uh, the result is basically an interface uh, to more uh, to the basic characteristics of, uh, of SHM we need for the service life uh, extension of wind parks. So, uh, very important, second uh, or another very important point here uh, I've been talking about before, it's the decision scenario. We are thinking in decision scenarios. Who's the decision maker? That's a wind park operator who has just started the operation of a new wind park. The decision point in time is the commissioning phase. The objective is the maximization of the expected benefits uh, so this is uh, basically the, the energy production, uh, but not just the energy production and the money, uh, but a full performance modeling of the wind park, of the component, of the wind turbine, and of the wind park, a full performance modeling. Uh, and accounting for the uh, structural risks in a more detailed way. So, um, yeah. Well, there, there's a lot more to say. Uh, wind parks are maybe a little different from, uh, 
from conventional infrastructures. <coughs> and uh, of course, it's the machinery which needs to be maintained and which uh, requires uh, regular maintenance. Uh, this is all accounted for in our cost model. Uh, but the uh, structural risks, um, uh, yeah, or the structures are, do not uh, need such uh, big maintenance efforts. Uh, but the important thing here is, uh, and this is also goes to our modeling and the level of detail again, uh, it's the failure of uh, the wind park, which is important because uh, it is about consequences and it's about production loss and uh, loss of the value of, uh, of the wind park. So, and uh, this is very important in relation also to our models. We have very extensive models and we can predict something uh, extremely accurate, but, uh, but it's for Decision analysis, it's the, uh, it's the decision scenario, which is important. And uh, so the level of, uh, of detail is here and in, in uh, the context of structures, it's the structural failure uh, and structural damage, uh, which is important here in this uh, decision analysis. So the life cycle phase we are um, looking at is the operation, so it's a complete operation uh, of 20 or 25 years and uh, we have a performance model of the structural reliability under deterioration and extreme events, so wind waves uh, and uh, then the performance of the components of the wind turbine and of the wind park. I think I will, uh, I will skip this. Uh, this is our decision scenario. We have our, our general formulation of the decision scenario. We have been uh, talking about this. Maybe also not the specifics of our value of information analysis, but maybe let's have a look here. So what system states do we have? We have the wind park operating. We have a component damage. Uh, we have a component failure which may lead uh, the component damage here to wind turbine damage and to wind park damage. And the, the, the damage may also lead then from wind park damage to wind park failure or from uh, wind turbine damage to wind turbine failure. And uh, so this is all interconnected. Now we have such a, a model and um, again models, uh, yeah, uh, we can very, um, we can have an uh, extremely sophisticated uh, model here of, uh, of this wind turbine to predict fatigue stresses. Uh, I've been uh, doing volume elements on tripod foundations, for instance. Um, but uh, this may not be so decisive here. Uh, and it only gives uh, a prediction, a very limited prediction, but this model is uh, is having all the system states of uh, component wind turbine level, wind park level, first and second over the uh, complete operation phase. Yeah, this is the models we need, or this is the uh, models we use in the decision analysis, which should have a clear connection and an interface to the uh, refined engineering models. Okay, um, the important information here in this diagram is uh, not maybe, maybe not the details, but uh, we have here the service life uh, over 25 years and we can predict the structure reliability uh, or here's the probability of failure or of damage, the light gray lines the damage uh, and the dark grey lines uh, are the failures on the different levels. Um, 
Yeah, this case study also includes here the system functionality uh, where we have um, yeah, uh, the main parts of a cost benefit analysis. So, uh, capital expenditures, operational expenditures, and uh, ABEX has something to do with the decommissioning. So, and then uh, we are uh, maybe this. Slide is uh, also important. So, what is the infra interface to our structural health monitoring information, our information at all uh, levels from uh, what we can gain from the structure? So, um, it's uh, the information, this is the interface, it's characterized by the type of the information, the precision, this goes to the uncertainties and the costs we need uh, for each uh, SHM strategy. Uh, basically these characteristics to be fit in, uh, in our decision analysis. And then uh, we have been looking at three different strategies. One is um, fatigue loading on uh, wind turbine level, on fatigue loading load uh, monitoring uh, on uh, component level. Uh, so this is the hotspot measuring uh, basically. And uh, here we solely look on extreme low monitoring, so extreme wind, extreme waves, uh, and this is uh, fatigue waves uh, and fatigue wind, or, uh, well, or let's say uh, better to say here uh, fatigue induced by uh, wind and waves, and here the same. So, and um, what we find, the value of information, is uh, that uh, the component load monitor, uh, loading monitoring, uh, where we measure the fatigue um, uh, strains here, or the hotspot monitoring, where we are measuring directly at the hotspot, over the complete service life, uh, this was the assumption here, then uh, this leads to a value of information of uh, 27 or 33 percent. So that means that uh, 27 or 33 percent of the expected total uh, life cycle costs or total uh, operational costs, yeah, we are in the operational phase uh, and risks can be saved yeah, by, by SHM. And uh, we find also that the, uh, uh, if we just uh, monitoring the loading on the wind turbine, uh, this does not provide a value of information. So it's, it's negative here. And of course, we have accounted for uh, the SHM system uh, investment, installation, operation, and uh, replacement interval of uh, 10%. Uh, of 10 years. So the conclusions of this uh, case study is that the uh, wind park service life extension is not optimal without SHM uh, and the reason is because the structural risks are simply too high um, and we need um, structural health monitoring, but uh, with a rather high precision. So this goes to the uh, component and hotspot fatigue uh, monitoring, and uh, this is the third conclusion. Uh, so we need to know something about, this goes to the type of the information. Uh, we need to know something about fatigue, and this, uh, this will then be efficient. And I think these uh, results can uh, rather directly be applied, um, but uh, of course uh, the uh, strategies uh, which are modeled here, they uh, need, uh, need further substantiation, uh, what this uh, specifically means. So we have been providing here, uh, or what, what our finding is, this is what I said in the beginning, it is about the type uh, 
um, of the SHM information, so we have clarified the type, it's the fatigue uh, we need to monitor. And then uh, we have clar clarified uh, that we rather need uh, relatively high precision, this is the second uh, point here. Uh, a low precision may not be value of information optimal, so you may uh, spend more than you are getting back. And the third point goes to the costs. Uh, so, yeah, we have documented the cost model we have uh, been assuming. And, uh, of course, cost modeling is also subject to uncertainties. Thank you. This was uh, my presentation. Thanks. Uh, just a few comments, questions before we go to lunch. Yep. Yeah, I, looking at uh, your slide there, uh, I, I can understand uh, that uh, for uh, maintenance purposes uh, and uh, uh, added life of an existing structure, uh, you do not need to monitor the wind turbine loading uh, specifically. But uh, if you look at uh, the uh, biggest uh, uncertainties concerning the design of the wind turbine. It involves the wind turbine loading. So, uh, and, and there is uh, a lot of research, uh, for instance, your colleagues at DTU, there's a, a big uh, operation there that lives on uh, uh, studying uh, wind action on, uh, on wind turbines. And uh, so, uh, it would be very valuable for them to get a uh, information from a wind park like this, uh, we, we will jump by loading part, <laughs> even though it does not uh, uh, yeah. directly affect the, uh, the life of the existing structure. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think this is a very good point uh, that so we need to feedback uh, yeah. from our SHM measurements uh, to the design. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this is a continuous effort uh, when we look at the uh, development phase uh, when first the first offshore uh, wind turbines were developed and then there were studies uh, on how to calculate it uh, and they had measurements and with these measurements then they decided uh, for which uh, uh, yeah, which modeling uh, type and the design phase is appropriate and that, that's a time domain uh, due to the uh, dominance of uh, uncertainties regarding the aerodynamics um, and also, um, yeah, also the structure part, the soil structure interaction. So this is only uh, can only be captured with time series analysis, mm -hmm. not like we have for conventional uh, structures where it can be analyzed in the frequency domain, this is mainly linearly. So it's a continuous uh, effort, uh, it has been there from the very beginning. But uh, of course, uh, yeah, this is an important point. Thanks. This is uh, <clears throat> touching upon value of information uh, in the context of prototyping, right? So yeah, standardization, uh, prototyping. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a feedback. I mean, yeah. A lot of uh, design uh, data is actually. Uh, gathered uh, from uh, just a single turbine, which you are monitoring very, mm -hmm. in a very detailed way. Yeah. But then you have this part where you have uh, interaction between uh, one turbine to the next turbine, and, and that can create uh, an entirely different loading pattern yeah. uh, that is not easily accessible unless you have the capabilities or, or possibilities to, <coughs> to actually realize or see how it is in in, in this type of situation. Sure. Sure. Very short comment. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing is maybe we have it. to clarify a little bit more what is uh, the difference between extreme loading and factory loading and what sort of because they are all interrelated by the guess. You have more slides, I think, to present. But the second most important comment is you have a lot of structures, many structures. If you plan to book this system in each one, or in some representatives, so you can save some more money and correlate results to others because they are all in the same field. 
Also you were also cited, for example? Yeah. Uh, the idea is to uh, explicitly account for the dependencies. Okay. And then it becomes possible to monitor this turbine and to uh, infer the condition on the other one. You said not before the model. Yeah, we, we are actually working on it. Um, that we optimize the uh, inspections and uh, monitoring by accounting for the dependencies. Because uh, this allows us also to adhere to the condition of the others. I'm closing the session. Thank you very much to the designer.